tonight on the show, we've got the stars of the new Suffragette film, and I feel my audience are getting restless. When do we want it? All right, let's start the show! Protesting. Excellent protesting audience. Very good. Because they ought to protest. Still alive and well, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, a lot of anger at the Conservative Party conference this week. Uh, here's a young Tory arriving at the venue. Now, <laughs> how did they spot he was a young Tory? <laughs> it's, it's incredible, isn't it? And of course, David Cameron made a rousing speech to conference this week where he had an important message to the party faithful. One time, I did it with a dead pig. One time. <laughs> by this new pop star, Gabrielle Ackman. But first, this domestic goddess created a whole new style of cooking. Now she's back with a new book and a BBC series. It's Simply Nigella Lawson! There she is! Hello! Oh, oh so good to see you. Lovely, lovely. Sit, 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 sit. Star of To Die For, Moulin Rouge, and an Oscar-winning role in the hours. She's just made a triumphant return to the stage in Photograph 51. It is Nicole Kidman! <laughs> Hello! Oh, hi! Hi! hi. hi. Guys, guys. When I go later, it's true. It's all true. Sit, sit, sit. She's the young British actress who's wowed the world with roles in An Education, Shame and The Great Gatsby, currently starring in the critically acclaimed movie Suffragette. It's Carrie Mulligan, everybody! <laughs> the role of Emmeline Pankhurst in the same movie. This actress has won three out of a record 19 Oscar nominations. She's true Hollywood royalty. And one of my favorite guests, welcome back, Meryl Streep, everybody! Yay! Oh, so nice to see you. Everybody. Is everyone well? Yeah. You seem very far away. I am. <laughs> it, no, well, you're quite far away too, but it's a, it's a conversational <laughs> yes. grouping. Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, congratulations on order because since we last met Kerry Mulligan, a uh, new little baby. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Love it. <laughs> So, uh, what did you have? I know nothing. I had a girl. A girl. And minutes old? How, when did it happen? Uh, three weeks ago. Oh, okay. So, not <laughs> many minutes old. Okay. Oh, so, this must be nice just getting out of the house. Oh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll go on a chat show. Yeah. <laughs> very, very good. Now, uh, obviously, there's, there's lots of connections on the sofa uh, because uh, Carrie and Meryl, you're in the same movie together. Yeah. Yeah. And famously, Nicole, Meryl, in the hours together. Yeah. But did you ever meet in the hours? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but afterwards. Yeah, afterwards. red carpet. <laughs> I was shocked when I saw Nicole in the movie because she stole my nose. <laughs> 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 it was like, oh my god, no, it was really kind of like it, you know. <laughs> Didn't you keep the nose? Yeah, I loved having that nose. Yeah, yeah. I really did. I loved my profile. Yeah, I yeah. liked that one. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the other memento you got for the hours was an actual Oscar. And well, yes, okay. yeah. <laughs> Which now this is surprising, ladies and gentlemen. That was the same year, uh, Meryl Streep not even a nomination. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I got the Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> now that is odd, isn't it? Well, I mean, it's hard for you to talk about, it but it's very an unusual. <laughs> yes, it was very unusual. <laughs> You must be trying on dresses and going, you what now? <laughs> Never happened again. <laughs> and Meryl Streep, you weren't always Meryl Streep. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> um, no, at birth, at birth, uh, I ha had to be named Mary because my mother's name was Mary and her mother's name was Mary and her mother's name was Mary. <laughs> I named my first daughter Mary. 
<laughs> because I'm, you know. Yeah. I'm that way. What is, the, what is that way? Uh, what do you call it? Creature yeah. of habit? You know? No, trying to fit in. All right. You know, and yeah. make everybody happy in the family, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, yeah, but my mother's. What was the question? I'm <laughs> sorry. You, you weren't Meryl. What is my name. You weren't Meryl. My what name. is your name? Yeah, was the I question. Knew that. <laughs> I, knew that. I knew that. I know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was born. So I was born Mary, and Louise was my mother's best friend, Louise Buckman. So I was named after her, and um, but I was always called Meryl. My father's made that name up, and he he liked that name, and so I hated it. I wanted to be named Patty or Kathy, or <laughs> that's how they said it in my town, mm. Patty, Kathy, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh, you'd be such a different person if you yeah. been brought up Patsy, wouldn't you? I don't know. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But I had glasses, and my name was Meryl. And, <laughs> uh, you know, and it had a, a P on the end. The, the street should have been street. I always wish, why, why didn't they just put the T on the end instead of P? <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. It's all coming out now. <laughs> And Nigella, when was it just, when you just left university, you weren't Nigella Lawson for a little bit, or you had a pseudonym you used? Well, no, I was a journalist and I used my name, but I also wrote under a pseudonym. A rather fabulous pseudonym, actually. Share it with the group. But it's, I, <laughs> I, it's kind of inspired by my name in the sense of a very ridiculous first name, but a rather pedestrian, you know, workaday surname, and my pseudonym was Mercedes Wainwright. <laughs> And what articles would Mercedes write that Nigella wouldn't? Well, I was a literary journalist and at that stage uh, wanted to write things that I wouldn't be... I don't know, I didn't write for magazines much, I wrote for newspapers. So when I wrote for magazines, I used that name. <laughs> Mercedes Wainwright investigates. Very good. Because, <laughs> <laughs> Carrie Mulligan, when you were a, you know, a young, not an actress, you were dreaming of being an actress, you thought you wouldn't go with Carrie Mulligan. No, I thought Carrie Mulligan was a bit sort of dumpy. And, well, I like know. that. That was a very good noise audience. Like, oh, dumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Did she say no, dumpy? No, I just thought it was a bit sort of, you know, so I wanted a glamorous name, like... Catherine de Najac and um, <laughs> Catherine Hathelier. And I used to work in a pub, and so I just... The, and the same four guys used to come in every day between two and five, and I'd ask them to dream up names. <laughs> that was the best that we yeah. got. And by five o'clock, I imagine they were quite good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Nicole Kidman, you had an adorable name when you were little. A sort of pet name. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I'm wrong. No. If I'm wrong, <laughs> you know, won't you call? Is it? I don't know how you call it. Is it Hukulani? Oh no, that's not my pet name. That's my Hawaiian name. Oh, oh so I, 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 I do forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because I was born in Hawaii. Oh, so does everyone get an Hawaiian name if you're born in Hawaii? No, but I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hokulani. What does it mean? It means heavenly star. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, <laughs> slightly undermines it yeah. when you explain where your parents got the name. Um, from the Honolulu Zoo, there was a baby, <laughs> the baby elephant that was born at the same time as me was called Hokulani. <laughs> now, actually, so we, we found, we read about it, so we Google it, there was a picture, oh, no. this is a picture of Hukulani the elephant. Oh. See? See Heavenly the similarity? Star. My twin! <laughs> It's the hour's nose. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, stop that now. That isn't what I meant. Okay. But so we were, we were in the office and we, you know, kind of <clears> elephants <throat> live. Yeah. Elephants live. And we thought, oh, I That's wonder what happened. That's amazing. I wonder what happened. I, I wonder what happened. Is that really the. And you've got him. Wouldn't it be amazing here? if we had Hukulani at back? So we emailed, <laughs> we emailed Honolulu Zoo no. and said, yes. remember Hukulani? What happened to the Hukulani? And uh, very kindly, someone, I think her name's Barbara, she found time to email back. Uh, aloha, because that's what you say. Mm. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not aloha. What is it's this? Aloha. Aloha. Ah. Hokulani. Yes, aloha. <laughs> Hokulani. Hokulani. Oh, oh. Uh, Barbara writes, I am sorry to say that Hokulani died at the Honolulu Zoo on November the 13th, 1970. Oh. 
1970. Oh, now, so you would long. think, busy, busy, busy running a zoo, I'll stop my email there. That's all they wanted to know. Yeah. No, Barbara continues. <laughs> she was found dead in the moat of her exhibit. Oh, it goes on. This is awful. It, I know. But this was in 1970, and I Barbara remembers it like it was yesterday. <laughs> she was found in the moat. It was oh. speculated that she was pushed in by another young elephant, <laughs> uh, jealous of the mothering attention she was receiving from an older female. I wish there was a more warm and fuzzy angle to this story. <laughs> Good luck with your interview. <laughs> Thanks, Barbara. I, yes. I would say she's got the measure of your show about right. <laughs> <laughs> They'll love this dead elephant story. Uh, the detail. Oh my God. Uh, but now, listen, let's start. We must talk about uh, the big film tonight, is Suffragette. Mm. And Suffragette is a terrific, terrific film. Mm. It opens everywhere on Monday, and it tells the story of the suffragette movement in the 1900s as they fought to get the vote for women. And I love it because it gets that balance so right between the historical, the political, and the personal. Mm -hmm. So the tale is sort of told through your journey, Kerry, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a working class mother, and, and it's told... It's sort of set in Bethnal Green in 1912, and it's about mm -hmm. the East End militant suffragettes, and, and I start the story kind of apathetic, kind of conventional, and, and pretty miserable, and I sort of get drawn into this movement. Because you don't want to be a suffragette. No, and I, and I think, like a lot of women then, they felt it was... Um, not respectable and and uh, and dangerous and and sort of wanted to avoid it, but she becomes inspired by these women that she meets and and the whole mm. campaign is led by Emily Pankhurst, who Meryl plays. Yes, because you, obviously you play the iconic mm. Emily Pankhurst, and I wonder, is there any real footage of her? Any newsreel footage of Emily Pankhurst? Yeah, there is. There's uh, there are eight seconds of um, of film of her. It's the only thing I found. That's about how long I am in the movie too. <laughs> <laughs> And, and Kerry, you what, what, you had a, a part in Meryl getting in the film. She got me the job. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen this actress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, well, we, we I signed on quite early, and, and we debated, not really debated, but um, we were trying to figure out, you know, who was who was going to play Emily Pankhurst, and and I was on a walk with my mum, and she said, oh well, you know, what if you got Meryl Streep? And I was like, oh, Mum, come on, bless you. We're never going to get Meryl Streep. <laughs> and, um, and then I mentioned it to Sarah, and I said, you know, well, maybe we should just <laughs> offer it. And, like, you know, w what does it matter? You know, we may as well. And, um, and she said yes. And I was in the bath, and I got an email from Sarah Gavron, the director, saying, Meryl's in. And I dropped my phone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was sort of such a huge... Oh, yeah, I was so honoured to be in it. I mean, it's, it's really wonderful, and she is... Fantastic, in it. You really are. Uh, we're going to yeah. watch a clip. Uh, this is where uh, Carrie's character, Maud Watts, and Mrs. Pankhurst are trying to mm -hmm. evade the police. Edith. Mrs. P. Dear Emily. This is Mrs. Watts, Mrs. Pankhurst. Maud. Thank you, Maud. Never surrender. Never give up the fight. Father arresting them. Let their husbands deal with them. Drop them at their front doors. And I, the, the scene where you address the suffragettes. Yeah. In a way, there must have been something kind of real about that because you've got all these actresses and extras, women in that crowd, oh, yeah. who presumably do, you know, they're geeked, because it's like, Meryl Streep's going to come to you in a minute. <laughs> so, did you get a buzz out of it? Oh, I did, because we, they didn't, we didn't rehearse it. And so, they got the crowd together, and everybody was there, all the actresses were lined up, and I was nervous, because, you know, I, I, this is my only thing in so the movie. It makes me so happy that you were nervous. <laughs> <laughs> it was thrilling to me. I was like, no, that's nervous. <laughs> I, was nervous. I kept forgetting my line. But, um, but uh, yeah, they were very forgiving and they were so excited. I mean, part of it is that, is that um, 
this is all such really recent history, if you think about it. It's only a hundred years ago. My, my grandmother was, uh, had three little children before she was allowed to vote, and I remember her telling me how annoyed she was. Not that she couldn't vote for president, but that she couldn't vote for the school board. She really cared who was on the school board because it was what, how her children were going to be educated. And because people do listen to you, Meryl, you know, they're kind of like, oh, she's speaking. Uh, do, do, you, do you think you might get involved in public office? Would you ever run for, would you ever run for an oh, elected God, post? Oh, God, no, never. I, in fact, I'm just in awe of people who put their lives on the line like that. Because, especially now, the cost to your family, to the larger group that you love, it's almost, I mean, you just offer them on, on the yeah. altar. But you make movies like this movie, which you really should go see, because it does, I mean, so many people do not know the history of what it took for women to get the right to vote, and still don't have the right to vote in very many countries. But that's, that is like being in office, if you want to call it, in the sense of that's your contribution as actors and as storytellers, is we can put this out in the world. Yes. And Similarly, your fabulous. play, your play is the same, isn't it? I mean, it's... A, it's yeah, it's well, it's different, but it's... it's a, overdue recognition for a for woman. For a woman scientist, yes. so... But it's lovely to be in that position, to be able to, to do that and say, here it is, here's yeah. the work, go see it, digest it, talk about it, mm -hmm. and keep things moving forward. I do think we owe it to the world, to mm. women who have no voice, to get behind projects like this that, yeah. that um, help Well, us. it's yeah. great, really, really terrific. Um, now, now, Nicole's play, Nicole's play, uh, you're so good in it. I heard you laughing. <laughs> <laughs> there are funny bits. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, did you? What, no, yeah, was it distracting? Yeah. Oh. No, no, it wasn't distracting. It was, it boosted me. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to come back. Was I mental? I was. It was funny when I laughed. Yes, this yeah. funny part. Yes. Absolutely. I was saying, you're so good mm. in this play. It's uh, Photograph 51. It's on now till the 21st of November at the Noel Cart Theatre. Extra tickets apparently have been released. Yeah. And now, the, the premise, the premise, if I'm being honest, before I went to see it, premise sounded a little dry. <laughs> um, it, well, look, it's the discovery of DNA. Yeah. But in fact, but it is a compelling story. So talk us about your character and her path in that, that discovery. Um, I play Rosalind Franklin, who was a scientist um, who was involved in discovering DNA. She was a crystallographer and she found this way of... Um, anyway, I'm not going to get into the scientific jargon. I'm like, shut up, Nicole. <laughs> the, hy <laughs> the hydrated sample. Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> but it is, but Wrong seriously, the, um, it is because it's got a, yeah, there's a kind of a race involved. She, well, she and, took yeah. the photograph that basically allowed Watson and Crick to go and build the model for the double helix, which is... Um, DNA. So and because because it happened DNA. because it happened back in the fifties, and you know she has since then been a footnote in sort of history. Yeah. Who rescued her? How was she rediscovered? I mean, if you talk to scientists, they know about her. Um, my father was a biochemist, so he knew about her when I told him I was going to be doing the play. Um, but in in the, the public, no, you know. Maybe you know the names of Watson and Crick who discovered DNA, but you don't hear of Rosalind Franklin. And watching it, so it really struck me that, you know, because you haven't been on, on uh, sort of you haven't been in the West End for, is it 17 years or something? 17 years, no. Because watching it, I just thought, oh my, you're so good. And I just oh. thought, that must feel great mm. to be back on stage going, oh my God, I'm good at this. <laughs> just got to be on, you know, I'm like, just flexing that theatrical muscle and going, oh, I can read. I was terrified. I mean, I remember 17 years ago, I always seem to come to London to do plays because I love, love doing plays yeah. here and I've, I love the theatre. I grew up going to the theatre and so um, I kind of jumped in going, yes, I'll do a play. Uh, and then the reality of it, I mean, we rehearsed in a small church hall, which was lovely, but the fear started to grip me and I, I, I was sort of really, um, I had terrible stage fright where it was pounding heart and adrenaline surging through my body that I don't remember 17 years ago. So I think because I'm older, I'm now got Are you enjoying different it now? hormones. Are you enjoying it now? Uh, I now love it. Oh, I good. love yeah. going on stage. But it was just interesting navigating that, um, mm. that fear and still going on and doing the performance and getting lost in the performance. Mm. But in the wings, going, oh, how do I get on stage? And I can understand actors just not getting on the stage, just not getting there. Yeah. But I saw Carrie... I've seen Meryl on stage. I saw Carrie 
um, on stage just, when was it, a few months ago? Yeah, in New, in yeah. New York doing Skylight and she was superb. She's I saw flowers. Meryl do a cartwheel. What? Oh, oh yeah. Right? Cartwheel, cartwheel, <laughs> cartwheel. No, no, no. <laughs> But I saw you do um, uh, Skylight with um, oh, I Bill. Oh, a forward roll or something, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, Did you get scared? Yeah, yeah. Again, I'm thrilled Nicole Kidman gets nervous but as well. This is making me feel so much better. Necessary to oh, everything. This was, this was yeah. fear that was like, yes. I mean, I'm, I'm, I I'm not surprised. It. Just the idea of someone going on stage is just so terrible. But, but, but it, they but told just... me it would go, and it has gone. Yeah. But it does seem a weird a... thing to be built into a job. To be, you know what I mean. If a bus driver was scared of bus driving, you'd suggest he didn't do it. <laughs> it, it it's, it's, it's. But, but it's it. weird that something. No, but you know what I mean. It's weird that you've yeah. chosen a job that you're quaking in the wings, kind of go. Yeah, don't no, make me it do is. it. And it's like, why but am I you, doing this? Don't you get scared before you do a show? May I present? <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> I don't suggest that. <laughs> now, Gary Mulligan, you've had some odd reviews over the years. <laughs> well, well, wasn't there, what did somebody describe you oh, as? Oh, no, this wasn't a review. I try not to read reviews. I okay. try not to, and then yeah, sometimes I get a bit drunk or something, yeah. and I'm like, oh, I'll just have a look. And then... Just Google myself. <laughs> 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 you know, when you're, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, um, no, this wasn't a review. This was, I was filming Suffragette, mm. and we had a slow morning. It was a Sunday, mm. and I got the Sunday papers, and I opened... <laughs> something and some I, someone was writing about me for no particular reason just because and described me as a human balaclava <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I was sort of hurt but also really confused <laughs> So, well, it obviously means I'm boring, but, you know... Does it? I don't does know, it does it? Does it? Does it? Does it? Does it? Does it? I think yeah. toasty and intimidating. That's what that means. Yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah, take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're better now. But, but weren't you on stage? <laughs> oh, yes, when I did 40... Yeah, my first stage play, I was mm. 19 at the Royal Court, and um, I was doing a Kevin Elliott play, and it was very serious. And... Um, and about four of the review, I've got quite big hands and quite big feet, sort of manly. You're just staring at me. They're not big. Oh, yeah. I don't know. They are comparatively quite big. Oh, and then I've got monsters. Okay. <laughs> You're very tall. What? <laughs> small hands. No, no, no. See? So oh, oh actually, there you go. actually, you're right, they're freakish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reviews mentioned how big my hands were. Well, see, when you do they that, they do look quite big. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was also acting a lot with them, you know, doing a lot of things. And Meryl, you've never had a bad review. Have you ever had a bad review? Oh yes. No. Oh, oh yeah. How bad? Uh, <laughs> well, I remember once in um, a Woody Allen movie that they said, "Oh, this is the best performance by a head of hair." And... <laughs> Really good hair. <laughs> well, if I, do, I think we have a picture of you, and it is, in fairness, good hair. That is, oh, that is, oh, see? That is boom. Hair. Yeah, upstaged it. by your own hair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I used it like a curtain. I mean, sometimes I'd have it this side, sometimes the other side, and it was very deep performance. Oh, dear. Now, listen, great reviews, I'm sure, are in store because uh, Nigella Lawson has returned with a new book and a television series. Uh, Simply Nigella, the book is out now. The television series starts in November November and I, I <laughs> you lovely on cover mm. but I do look at it I think have you eaten it all did the Ocado delivery not come yet <laughs> what? It, what it is the food in these pages can will fill up these bowls yes. and there they are and they're on the back and they're on the back, they're on the mm. back. and so what's the thinking behind this it seems to be sort of a bit Middle Eastern a bit Asian more Asian than but, before yeah. Well, I went to Thailand. That'd be it. So I did, had a bit of there. But it's a bit of everything. You know, I, my recipes always are a bit of everything. I don't have any particular... I don't know... I have once had a book <clears throat> with one theme in my Italian book. But generally, I feel like, that, you know, there isn't a theme. Life hasn't really got a theme. It's kind of how I cook, and I find this easier on those days. Sometimes I need to eat something out of a bowl so that every... I have got a chapter called bowl food. Because, you know, those Ooh. days when you just want every yeah. spoonful to be the same as the one before in a bowl, maybe on a sofa. Yeah. And everyone that you always have to eat at the table. <laughs> I love being lying on a sofa with a bowl of food. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> um, I've got a chapter called breathe. <laughs> 
you know, those sort of yeah. things when you buy yourself time and it's easy. So lots of different things, different sorts of food, simple, all of it, not as a huge strategy, but because I have no particular skills to make anything complicated, and nor do I like complicated food. Mm. But now, because sometimes, because I don't really cook, but so sometimes I look at a recipe, you know, and there are, there are delicious things in, like pulled pork and the tequila lime mm. chiken, and I think, well, I could do all that, I could do that. But then, often, when you look at the pictures in yeah. cookbooks, you kind of think, mine will not look like no, that. It will not look like that. <laughs> but even I, I think, could produce that. <laughs> <laughs> that was, do you know what we had? We, we, I know, but that was really bad. I think I opened the book on that page. I was like, really? <laughs> I'll tell you what happened. It was too big a white space, and we were really running out of time. And we couldn't we do another whole food photograph, so I, I've got some sweet potatoes I've roasted. <laughs> I tell you why I like that. One, because I don't. I mean, anyway, it's aspirational for me. Anyway, I don't like food that's been that's faked up. I won't. I, nothing is faked mm. when I do it. But also, for example, I use a throwaway foil tin to roast things in. Mm -hmm. So it's more or less saying like, oh, this is how, this is how normal people cook. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be that fancy. And you know, there are brown bits coming out of the potatoes. Well, that's what happens too. Yeah. You can see a lot in some of those recipes that <laughs> maybe you know. There's some things, it's not at its mm. best, but they're such beautiful photographs. They're gorgeous. They're photographs yeah. of real food. Uh, well, Simply Nigella, the book is out now, and here's a clip of the TV series which starts on the 2nd of November on BBC Two. Tawny tangle of noodles. And these golden. Prawns. I rather love the shards of cinnamon going through it. Obviously, they're not to be eaten. Final touch. The leaves from the shoots of celery. A friend of mine's father said, if it goes in it, it's got to go on it. I said at the beginning that a stir-fry was comforting and familiar, but what this is, is comforting and unfamiliar. Because <laughs> Meryl, have you played, you played a famous cook, Julia yes. Childs, uh, but can you cook? No, I mean, <laughs> not, 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 not until I did that movie. But I never really understood that you have to make the time. My, I was raised by a mother who said, if it's not done in 45 minutes, it's not dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and she also, I remember, when I was 10, I went up the road to the neighbor's house, and she and her mother were in the kitchen, and they were doing something with tennis balls. And I said, what are you doing? And they said, peeling potatoes. I said, those aren't potatoes. Potatoes come in a box. <laughs> <laughs> they were dry, you know, flakes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God, that water, yeah, delicious. It's appalling how we ate, you know. Then, but do you know, every single sort of Michelin star French chef is obsessed with instant potatoes because in France they're all given it as children. These instant potatoes. Yeah. There's not a top French chef who doesn't go completely nostalgic. Oh, I can't remember what they're called in French, but they love them. Can you still buy Smash now? <laughs> Meryl's mother's in. <laughs> and now, Kerry Mulligan, I look at you and I don't know why, but I think possibly couldn't boil an egg. Oh. I don't know why I think that. Wow. Oh. What's wrong Brutal. with that? No, no, but can yeah. you cook? <clears throat> no. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm always Googling, like, have, uh, uh, what to do if you have salmonella, or you know, <laughs> I'm very worried about things cooking through. Yeah. You, know, you know, that's a very nerve-wracking thing. And Nicole, because you've got kids now, so you'll have, you must cook. Grilled cheese. Lovely. They'll be uh, on a chat pasta. show in years to come, telling pasta. a story. Pasta. Pasta. So you yeah, that's all the children ever want to eat. Oh, that's what getting them that's off what I want pasta. To eat. But um, but I collect cookbooks and recipes. I rip them out of magazines mm -hmm. and I see them and I have folders and books. <laughs> I don't ever cook. Yeah. <laughs> One day. But, One I day. Love, but I love to be cooked for. 
Sometimes they can be a bit repetitive. You know, you see the same things coming up. I guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen, when you're flicking through the cookbooks oh, this no, Christmas... What are you going to do? Well, no! <laughs> I'm just thinking, I can't imagine there is another cookbook with a recipe for pink pickled eggs. <laughs> they look delicious. No, actually, I'm sure you will find other ones because that is really... It's, a, it's actually a sort of my lazy take on a German way of pickling eggs with beetroot. Oh, they're, 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 how pretty do they look, though? I thought it looked a bit like 60s fabric. <laughs> yes, it's Did a bit it? all Achilles. I went a bit all over the place. <laughs> yeah. 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 I went a bit all over the yes. But you love a pickled egg. What's that story about the, the pickled egg? You ate pickled eggs. Was it at university you ate pickled eggs? No, no, no. no, 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 no. It was actually... Ooh, yes, when I, for a bit, no, <laughs> it must have been... John was still alive, so I would say it would have been... Any, you know, I think it was about... It was, by around 89, 90, mm. I, I ate... He was not well. We were hard up. I was... Someone bet me. It's such a foolish thing to bet me I couldn't eat something. Someone bet me I couldn't eat a whole jar, the sort of oh, sort no. you get in fish and chips or pickled eggs. Oh, my God. So I said, oh. I said, I'm afraid I went a bit sort of red-light oh, district on this one. I just said, put <laughs> all the money out. When I see the money on a tray that everyone... Because otherwise, people don't pay. <laughs> they don't pay. <laughs> and you've done it for the bet and they won't pay. So... <laughs> So I, the money was there. The money was there. You know. <laughs> What's a girl to do? Oh, a husband, baby and a toddler. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was how many? How many pickled eggs? Uh, a huge amount. My hands went completely. You know, that sort of puckered thing. If you've been in the bath too long, I had little ridges all over my mouth. Ridges like a duck, like that. Oh. But can I just say, I ate the whole lot, and the next morning I got up and I had scrambled eggs for breakfast. Thank <laughs> <laughs> good. Time. This singer has gone from YouTube sensation to one of the UK's fastest rising music stars. Performing her current single, Sweet Nothing, please welcome Gabrielle Applin. Gabrielle Applin, everybody! Come and join us, dude! There you go. That was fabulous. Yeah. Have a seat there beside Nigella. Say hi to the ladies. Very good. Oh, 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 very good. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for all those drummers. How great were they? <laughs> uh, those drummers are great. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's just brilliant. And that is off the album Light Up the Dark, which is out now. Yes. Yes, very good. Yeah, I'm, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, and what's extraordinary is because you've kind of done all this by yourself from the YouTube yeah. to your own label to now. Yeah, I accidentally set up a label when I was 15. And, um, <laughs> and yeah, and I was kind of releasing things independently. And then I got signed, um, and I was able to keep all my previous releases. That started making money that I wasn't allowed to use on myself, so I've started putting that into other artists whilst continuing my thing and painting myself with glitter. No, you look very no, nice. Feel really, I, should, I don't feel very sophisticated anymore. fancy dress. You're a pop star. You're supposed to look yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, and the album, the, the, I'll say it again, Light Up the Dark. Uh, are Keep you, saying it. Yeah, are you, tour, are you touring that album? Yes, so I'm touring um, the UK and Ireland in kind of January, February. Time. Okay, I'm just looking over there and I'm thinking that's quite the big boss. Yeah, I just take Johnny, the lone drummer. Oh, the good one? Yeah, the yeah, good yeah. one, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm joking! Oh, You're all marvellous, he's just better. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, yes, thank you very much for coming to see thank us. And so uh, good luck with the album. Gabrielle Applin! Just time for a visit to the big red chair. Who's there? Hello. Hello, nice lady. Hi, oh, I love you. They're you? hugely popular in the audience. Uh, what's your name? Susan. Susan, lovely. And where are you from, Susan? Uh, originally Yorkshire, now live in London. Okay, what do you do, Susan? I'm a professional driver. A professional driver of a vehicle. <laughs> if you need a vehicle moving, Susan can do it. Yeah. <laughs> Would there be people or things in the vehicle? Anything. Anything at all. It's a mystery to Susan. No, she never looks back. <laughs> <laughs> she just drives. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we'll never recognise the back of your head, so we'll never know. Was that Susan? <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> all right, off, off with one of your tales, Susan, of, of your life on the road. OK, uh, about three years ago, I was a special constable in the Metropolitan... You've Metropolitan. lived, Susan, I tell you. <laughs> 
OK. Yes. And we were sat in our vehicle and <laughs> we saw... She loves a vehicle. <laughs> we saw a, a, a guy in a white van not wearing his seatbelt. So myself and my colleague, we signalled to him with a hand gesture, please put your seatbelt on. <laughs> Your story could end there, but <laughs> it gets better. Oh, it gets, it gets better. better. Okay, go. So but she looked at us with a very disgruntled face and went. <laughs> so we were a bit baffled. So we followed him, pulled him over, and we said, "Do you realise you've just sworn two police officers? Why did you do that?" He said, "Well, you called me a wanker first. <laughs> <laughs> then, anyway, we let him off, put your seatbelts off, and off he went. He was a happy chap. Oh, very well. Well done, two. Even more. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Have a seat, sorry. Yeah. Could have stopped at the seatbelt gesture. We didn't really need the following. Yeah, that was the best bit. Yeah, it was very visual as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, who's up next? Hello, sir. Hello, Graham. Hi. What's your name? Andrew. Andrew. Uh, you're from New Zealand, Andrew. No, originally from the UK, but moved to Australia about yeah. six years ago. Okay. Okay. You know, he's really picked up the accent, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Yes. But he's only six. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, and but uh, you still live in Australia? Yes, with my wife. Oh, God, with it. he's got a wife. All right, back off, everybody. <laughs> I, I, I saw you all looking at him like a piece of meat. I thought that was you. No, he's married. He's got a wife. <laughs> totally married. Yes. He lives with her. <laughs> I'm sorry, Andrew. Go, go on with your story. Well, uh, so I moved out to Australia and... Uh, we know that. <laughs> to, be, to be with my wife. All right, we know that. And we were staying with, uh, with her parents at the time, and they had a, a dog and two cats, and one of those cats happened to be my wife's um, favourite, and the cat favoured her too. And she used to sleep uh, in, in bed with us, and, and she used to sleep at the top of the bed and on the pillow next to her head. And one night we were sleeping... And... <laughs> no, no. Oh, hiya. Oh, hiya. No one wanted to hear the rest of that story. <laughs> No, I, I was saving that. him from himself. He's not Australian. No. I want to hear him. No, it's a no, it's a Bring no. Bring him back. No, no. <laughs> no, no it's, it's... Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. All right, we're going to hear the rest of Andrew's story. Oh, Where is he? Here he is. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, now this is by Royal Command. Thanks, Nicole. Nicole Kidman has asked for this, so you better Make be it good. good. Off you go. So, okay. let me just say, we've got as far as the cat's on the pillow. Cool. So the cat's on the pillow, we're sleeping away, it's nice and, nice and dandy. Um, the next thing, we're woken up by a dry, retching sound, like... <laughs> Fantastic, this so, is so good. So I woke up in, you know, in my half-sleep days, gave it a little stretch, bit of a yawn, and then next thing I knew, my mouth was filled with no. half-digested half <laughs> cat biscuits. You wanted so to hear that! Meryl, Nicole. <laughs> You've upset Meryl Streep. That, that, oh. that's, that's the sort of story that sticks with you. I you know. Yes. I oh. Shall we try one more? Yeah. Okay, one more. Here we go. Here we go. Hello. Hiya. Hi, what's your name? Lauren. Lauren. Lovely Lauren. And uh, where do you live, Lauren? I live in Swansea. Swansea. Mm, Marvelous. Right. And uh, what do you do for a living? I work in retail. In retail? Yeah. It's posh for shop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, what, what, what sort of retail, what, what, what might you sell? Um, clothes, women's fashion, that sort of thing. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. a clothes shop. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, off you go with your story. OK, so about three years ago, I went to London to go to the premiere of The Iron Lady to oh. try and meet Meryl. Oh, my God. So I took my mum and my best friend. We kept missing her as she was, like, making her way through the crowds, and my mum got fed up with the cold and went into the National Theatre. By the time we found her, she was drunk. And when I say drunk, I mean steaming. Your mother? Or yeah, me? my mother. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to, like, take my mum back to the hotel, but we went past the premiere again, and she was talking to the security guards, and she told them that she was their undercover boss and secret millionaire. <laughs> but they believed her. <laughs> we met Meryl came out to the after party and was like she got into her car and we were like oh it's fine we've seen her I'm so happy and the window was down a bit in the front of the car and we were all like oh I'm so cold I'm so cold and Meryl got out of the car 
and came and meet me and my friends. And my mum was like, oh, thanks, Meryl, babes. <laughs> I'm just, we're taking you home now. <laughs> uh, you can walk, you can walk. Well done. <laughs> you came out of that story very well. Very good. Well done, everyone. If you'd like to join us on the show and have a go in that big red chair, you can just contact us via our website at this very address. Uh, thank you to my lovely guest tonight, Gabrielle Applin, everybody. Nigella Lawson. Great lineup. We've got Dawn French, Chris O'Dowd, Rachel Weiss, Rod Stewart, and Colin Farrell. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye. <laughs>